see, the first thing that you need for your writing part is an attention grabbing beginning. What does this mean? Before the starting of this video, I have given a smile to you and I have expressed my name to you. I have expressed this topic to you. Why? So that you actually find a little bit of attention, I suppose. You will get some attention for you to continue throughout the whole video. If I abruptly have started from this particular slide, you would not know what I am talking about. You would be very confused. And in that way, you will not want to watch the whole video after all, right? For this reason, what you need very importantly is attention grabbing beginning. What does this mean? This means that you can start off by using catchy phrases. What does the word catchy phrases mean? Catchy phrases can be like, imagine a world without dot 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 dot. Let's say an essay on global warming can start off by saying, imagine a world without any water. Why? Because global warming is causing all of the water to dry off. So that is when you will be thinking very clearly, okay, how can I imagine a world without water? Because our human being contains 70% of it as, as water. And water is something that is very essential. Without it, we can never live, right? So that is when you will actually think to yourself and think that, okay, a world without water means a world without human beings because we will be dying by that time, right? So catchy phrases are sentences or like small phrases like this with which you can start your paragraph or your essay or your speech or whatever. All the pieces of writing, you can start with a catchy phrase in order for your audience to actually understand and think why they are saying this or what is the main purpose of you writing this. Then we have stop, wait a minute or look or something like this. So you can use uh, phrases like this in a speech or even you can use them in, let's say, a, an essay, like a narrative essay. A narrative essay is a story writing. So in a story, let's say a story where you are explaining a theft, someone who is a thief. So you are explaining that there has been a theft occurring and you have to write in, write in a story. In that case, you actually can start by saying, stop, wait a minute. Or you can say, stop, there's a thief. And then continue with the whole essay. Why? Because doing something like this will actually make the readers want to read more. What? There's a thief already? Let me see what happens next, okay? So the second thing is proverbs for an attention grabbing beginning. So let's see, what is a proverb? A proverb is, uh, let's say, a sentence or it can be a group of words, it can be a clause, it can be a phrase or whatever. Most of the time a proverb is a sentence which a famous person or a very wise man has once said. Why? Because all proverbs have particular meanings or particular wise sayings that can be used in our daily lives in order to make a particular meaning. For example, the number one proverb, as you can see on the board, is all that glitters is not gold. In Bangla, we can say Why? Because we know that everything that glitters will definitely not mean a particular value. This means that everything that looks good on the outside might not be the same what is on the inside. Same thing happens to human beings, right? If I personally do not look that good, on the outside, maybe I am good on the inside, but you cannot judge me, but just by looking at my outside. Secondly, we have actions speak louder than words. This means that imagine someone promising you that yes, I will be doing this for you. But at the end of the day, that person has not. Then you can tell that person actions speak louder than words. What you have said is not what you have given me. Number three, two wrongs don't make a right. This means that in maths, we have learned minus and minus will make plus, right? But similarly, in the place of your reality, minus and minus don't make plus. 
This means that if someone does something wrong to you and if you do something wrong back at that person, that you might be thinking that yes, I have done something that is right. But in reality, no. All you've done is made a bigger mess. Then come sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. What does this mean? This means that whenever someone is expressing their thoughts about you or let's say they are bullying you with their words, some there are a lot of mean people in this world who can say a lot of different things about you, a lot of negative comments about you. Like right now I'm taking this class, a lot of these a lot of the viewers who are watching me might not be interested in my classes or might not even want to see my videos or they might not give me the compliments that I was asking for. In that case, should I quit everything and quit teaching and stay at home? No, I will continue doing what I love if I myself feel like I'm doing a good thing, right? So at the end of the day, what depends is your own moral values, your own integrity and your own ethics. For this reason, we will say, if there are sticks and stones which are thrown at me, only they can hurt me, but someone's negative words will not hurt me. Then we have number five. Every cloud has a silver lining. So, have you seen a cloud right after there has been a storm or let's say a heavy rain or thunder? You'll notice that right afterwards, the clouds will have a small white or almost silver lining surrounding it. Why? This shows the beginning of something good, like it shows the beginning of dusk or dawn or the beginning of sun peeking out through the clouds. This means giving a ray of hope whenever you've had a bad day. Let's say you are given the task to write on an essay on an unlucky day. So to write an essay on an unlucky day, you can start by saying, every cloud has a silver lining or moreover you can give the conclusion as every cloud has a silver lining saying that yes my entire day has been very unlucky but i am hopeful for the future because after every bad thing there can be something good in front of it okay so we have learned the second thing which are proverbs and thirdly there are rhetorical questions so what does the word rhetorical questions mean Rhetorical questions are whenever there are particularly a few questions that can have a meaning but it does not necessarily have to be answered by someone. What does this mean? This means that if I ask you, have you ever thought of a place or like have you ever thought how it would feel if we did not have education? Will you say yes, I have thought or no, I have not thought? Definitely not. You will definitely be thinking to yourself, what? A life without education. Then what would it be? What would we have done at that time? Maybe you would be forced into child labor. Maybe you would be forced into doing different tasks or maybe you would be married by the age of five or six. That is the condition of many countries still to this date those who are backdated or follow any superstitions. So you can start an essay titled Superstition by asking this particular question. So this is once again a rhetorical question. Now that these are done, let's look at a few famous quotations. Once again, you can start an essay by saying famous quotations like Dalai Lama has said the purpose of our lives is to be happy. So if you have any particular topic uh, which is titled a beautiful memory or a memory I, I'll never forget or a very or a very lucky moment or a very precious moment you can start these essays with the proverb the purpose of our lives is to be happy Dalai Lama secondly you can see get busy living or get busy dying which is said by the famous writer Stephen King so if you have uh, any essay which is titled hard work is the pillar to success or the, the importance of education in our daily lives or the importance of technology in our daily lives, you can start off by using this quotation saying that how important it is for you to work hard in order for you to gain money and gain success and freedom, right? Number three, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. 
that is a very famous quote once again said by Mahatma Gandhi saying that if you want to change something instead of pointing out that yes that is the change you should change yourself first okay then we have number four if you judge people you have no time to love them says said by Mother Teresa who is one of the kindest women uh, existing ever right so once again this means that instead of judging other people or instead of looking at someone else's work you should be loving them and understanding what are the positive things that that person has okay 